Tonight, live from Virginia Beach, Virginia, podcasting all things musical from Southeast Virginia. Our sound, our songs, our artists, and our business. Welcome to SivaCast with hosts Tom Farley and Alton Riddick. Let's get talking. Thank you, Alton, for a really nice introduction. And tonight we have a really, really special situation for the first time on SivaCast. We actually are going to do an entire band in one podcast. Uh, which is, you know, it's kind of exciting. It's kind of new. And we're also using the Squadcast uh, format. So that's also new. So it's, a, it's going to be a, a really, really nice, I guess you could say fresh techno approach, but uh, also a really different uh, personal approach. So Rachel and the guys, uh, let me make sure I got my names right. Jason, Billy, and Tony. Uh, how's everything going tonight? Good. good. So good. good. We we got online. I mean, that's half the battle, right? It is half the battle. <laughs> I, 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 there have been techno issues, I'd say, with maybe, you know, 75 percent of, of the times that we tried this. And this one was pretty, pretty seamless, pretty smooth, which is great. So uh, let me uh, uh, get back to uh, the, the, uh, start off rather in our in our questions. The first one. Um, when did you all make your journey as musicians or, or as songwriters? Uh, who, who's the number one songwriter in the group? Uh, how does all that work with the band? That's hard to, I, hard to say because I, I write the songs, the words, but um, Billy comes up with a lot of the sort of ideas and then everybody works together to sort of create the, the overall sound. So it's really a group effort. What do y'all think? Yeah, we all kind of come up with looks and bring them to the group and we start working on them, start playing around on them, and mm-hmm. eventually they become music that we're able to put the lyrics to. Excellent. I mean, you know, that uh, lots of times that collaborative spirit just doesn't really kick in, but you guys seem to not only have it, but look like you enjoy it as well. Most days. I mean, yeah, I think that we, I mean, we all have <laughs> private group chats, but let's face it, you know, you have to do what you have to do. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, you know, uh, uh, did everybody start at, you know, at a young age as far as being musicians or vocalists? Uh, I mean, were you, you know, playing a guitar at five years old or what was going on? I'll let y'all take that one because I'm embarrassing in this area. Go ahead. <laughs> you right you tell me. Yeah, tell us. Well, I came from listening to punk rock and ska bands and then started playing, I think I was about 18. And eventually I decided I really liked it. Saw a bunch of really cool punk bands like uh, Holy Red, mm-hmm. Spit Valves, a whole bunch of Orlando bands. And I ended up going to college for music. Went to college, and I went to UCF after that, and then I ended up in the military. Did you play in a, in a, a military band? No, I'm looking for the auditions, but right now they're full. Really? Understood. How about the rest of you guys? I've been playing piano since I was seven, and I picked up guitar and bass when I was 14. And then, um, you know, graduate, played in a high school band, played in, uh, joined the military, played in a military band, in the Air Force uh, bass band, and the uh, Red Horse bass band. And like Tony, you know, I yeah. was inspired by uh, punk rock bands and just, you know, that 77s. New type punk, new wave, and what have you. And then went from there to kind of uh, alt country type stuff. But, and then to this. Yeah, I guess it's a progression. <laughs> oh, absolutely, man. I mean, you know, it, it, it changed it, but, you know, every single one of those, uh, those genres has, uh, and, you know, has its own flavor and everything. It, 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 you know, it, it helps, uh, you know, give you that depth. You're, you're like cured, so to speak. You know, it's like fine wine or something. What about you, Jason? Uh, I started kind of late. or always around music growing up, listening to my parents' music and my dad's old 45 when he was younger. But uh, when I got into college at Virginia Tech, and this happened. Uh, Go Hokies, dude. Yep. Got, got up there, found a group of guys uh, living in an apartment that I became friends with, and they were all musicians. So we hung out there a lot. And they've just started teaching me little things, and I just kind of picked it up from there and started teaching myself and watching videos and absorbing whatever I can and just doing more and more until I met Rachel, and her and I started playing together. The only way, reason why I went uh, go hokey is I went to tech too. So, I mean, you know, I, I also did a lot of, a uh, lot of you know, the first musical creativity at tech. So mm-hmm. it seems to be a great place to do that kind of thing, you know? It, it definitely opens you up to a lot of different genres of music, different people, 
different abilities and it, it's a great place to just grow. So Rachel, how'd you get into the singing thing, girl? Um, one day me and Jason were, were like, we should do a guitar and singing. And then that was, <laughs> I, gosh, I, that must've been but four years ago. So I have no training. I don't know anything. I can't read music and the guys want to kill me, but they put up with me. Um, and somehow we get through. So no, I, I have no, <laughs> it just occurred. But- no, I mean, you know, I understand. I don't I don't read music. Uh, Paul McCartney doesn't read music. I mean, you know, if, if he doesn't read music, I, get, I guess we can all get a pass, you know, yeah, so to speak. Agreed. Thank you for understanding. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm dying to find out how did you all, I guess you could say, evolve into the burlesque soul, which basically is the is the the genre that you all put on your uh uh, your metadata, so to speak, that uh, it's what people are going to register when they actually get into to actually listening to your music. So uh, how did you all you know arrive at that? I think that's really cool. I don't know. Well, so I, a little bit of backstory, I'm sort of from a performance background of, of burlesque and belly dance and, and things like that. So I think I speak for a lot of us, we're into sort of retro vintage kind of um, revamping you know, into a modern way. And uh, it just sort of became what was natural, you know, sort of with my register, which is uh, down very low, low, low. And it just sort of worked with the aesthetic. What do y'all think? Do you have a, a different opinion about that? What? Pretty much not. <laughs> I, 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 the dancers that we do perform with, it yeah. all kind of just messes in with that performance group and our yeah. music here so. and we're also different the way we play everything mm-hmm. yeah it's like i'm also a heavy jazz background too yeah. so it kind of works out really well that's excellent well, I know I know what you mean about uh, the vocal register. Uh, my wife Tanya uh, has sang with me on stage in the studio for for decades, and her register is low. She has that low, sexy voice, and uh, that that sells. Uh, it does. It, it comes across really, really well. So does yours. We've sold tens I mean, uh, of records. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never can you never can tell. You know, this business it's so screwy. You never can tell when 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 the right person is going to hear the right song. You know, so. All right. So, all right. So where, you know, you got all this great musical and vocal background. Where do you all get the inspiration for the tunes that you do? I mean, you know, that it's got to come from somewhere. I don't know. So, Billy, where do you come up with some of your, um, they just come up with it. They just occur. They just yeah, occur. They just, occur. <laughs> they just come out of the ether. I don't have like a, you know, uh, I do not have a, uh, a jazz background, <laughs> but, but, you know, I, I, I like jazz, you know, yeah. I, I know like, uh, know how to play it fake it until you make it type type <laughs> like do your thing and then yeah, yeah. i kind of like yeah <laughs> jazz based in the background yeah. of it and, it and then we kind of add some more layers to it mm-hmm. yeah well, uh, but as far as the lyrics and stuff like that, are, are, do you do try and stick to what, what we consider, consider traditional burlesque type of stuff? Or do you like to speak uh, more from the heart or, you know, just exactly where does that come from? Um, a lot of it is just uh, like you, you describe sort of telling a story, which is a lot of burlesque music. Um, and just coming up with some fun hooks, like some fun phrasing, like as an example, our song Friday night, um, I just sort of got the phrase, you know, thinking about sinning on Friday night and and you think, you know, her, well, you certainly don't. And that's sort of my, my aesthetic is like that bold, brash kind of woman that you kind of don't want to meet in a dark alley, but you also kind of do. Um, so that's really what I sort of like my feeling. Um, and then, you know, the guys are like, okay, let's do this. <laughs>
was, but what a what a great you know, like I said, a great collaboration, a great way of doing things. Um, where I, I know uh, that I've never been able to to accomplish anything without you know Tanya's support, my family support, friend support. Where do you guys, uh, you know, is are your is everybody like in your family and friends like a hundred percent behind what you do, or has it been a struggle, or or what? Uh, I mean, first, I want to give a shout out. I have a performing a performance group, um, the Feral Showgirls, and from the very beginning, they have been fans. So there's dozens of them. Um, so we sort of had a built-in fan base, um, and they also dance with us and perform with us sometimes. So from the very get-go, we really just sort of had people who who followed us to venues and, and came to everything and supported us. And I know for me, my family is just like, as an example, I work with my mom downstairs in the office downstairs and she bought a CD player specifically to play the CD and plays it for every single customer. That comes <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that, that's what moms do, you know, that's what yeah. they do. Yeah. So, I mean, my experience has been, um, you know, a great one, aside from the customers being like, can we please not do this again? Um, but yeah, it's been great for me. So <laughs> what, <laughs> even me, I'm like, mom, I can't keep listening to myself. It's so weird. Um, so we only switched out two CDs, Lionel Richie Live and Rachel Magellan. <laughs> uh, so that's me. What, what about y'all? What do you think? <laughs> uh, it's been good seeing uh, Friends mm -hmm. out, uh, parents are supportive. They come out to shows, yeah. or when we've been up on the peninsula side over Gampton, mm -hmm. where they live, they come out. Uh, even people I work with have been supportive. Some of them have come out to shows, mm -hmm. and my office manager, you know, is encouraging enough where if I got to slip out of work early mm -hmm. to make a show or to make a practice, they're understanding and supportive of that. Mm -hmm. so yeah, it's been supportive all around everybody around me. Norfolk has a really good um, music scene, mm -hmm. you know. Yes, it does. They've been like very, you know, the clubs, venues, yeah. bars, whatever. They've been very supportive. And uh, just, you know, I mean, living in Norfolk, you know, mm -hmm. the word kind of like gets out, hey, you no, know, we're playing this place, that place, whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, and getting the repeat venues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's awesome. And also being a female fronted band that helps. I knew you were using it. <laughs> <me. laughs> well, what are you know? Speaking of venues, what are the venues that uh, you really enjoy playing? That have been the most supportive. Uh, have the best, I guess you could say, situation for musicians when they walk through the door. I'm going to give it to y'all. What do you think? Elevation is always yeah. nice. Elevation 27. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Zen. Zen House. Mojo Bones and Ocean View. Mm -hmm. they, yeah. They, they've kind of put us on a rotating schedule when they're still having music. Yeah. So we were back there every other month. They've been very supportive and continuously booking us there. Mm -hmm. um, the Tap House in Norfolk. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're good guys. Following that thread, um, uh, just exactly how incredibly negative has the uh, pandemic uh, actually affected your all's playing schedule? <laughs> That's <laughs> our awesome. uh, well, okay, so here's the deal. We yeah. have two members that are in the Navy, mm -hmm. so that's kind of like, you know, a drummer, for example, is, is in here tonight. Duty. What a duty, yeah. COVID, yeah. whatever, you know. But we're under a pretty yeah. set of rules where we can't yeah. go to certain places. Mm -hmm. But in a way, that works out because everything is shut down. Yeah. You know, and the few venues that we have played at have been, you know, we're, we're thankful. Mm -hmm. We're very thankful for it, you know. Well, I, I have uh, I have several friends that, uh, that are that are still there playing. Uh, a lot of them are like you all have day jobs, you know, and they play on uh, whenever they get the chance to, to catch a venue. But there are some people out there who are, you know, their money that they get is that's paying their rent and putting food on the table. And it's it's been hard. And it's uh, it's, it's good that uh, that you all haven't, uh, you know, uh, been, I guess you could say, crushed by this, like like some of the people have and that you're staying active, which, you know, it speaks well to your music as well. So, you know, that's a good thing. We are staying so, active by doing we do uh, online. Yeah. We've done like online shows. And yeah. Do you all enjoy doing that? It's different. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a different. mixed bag. It's yeah. it's um you, you just really miss the yeah. immediate response mm -hmm. of a crowd in person. So yeah, you know it. 
it's one thing to have somebody sitting here and telling us, oh, we so so and so commented on this, or somebody's asked a question which would happen organically mm -hmm. in person, but it's still a good way to us to play together yeah. and keep putting the music out there and kind of keep putting the name out there and you know some people it might just be what they need that week to kind of just get over a bad day or a bad couple of days understood you know like our last video that we did had what like 1200 views yeah something like that you know in a matter of hours mm -hmm. which, which was really great you know oh absolutely yeah that's awesome no, we could just get twelve hundred people. <laughs> you can't. That's a super spreader event. We need to calm down. <laughs> well, do you all do you all think that the the technology, as far as delivering the audio, especially, but uh, you know, the video uh, comes through pretty well, but delivering that audio in a, in a really, really good, like full, you know full-throated, I guess you could say, really nice uh, resonance into people's homes. Do you think that uh, that uh, possibly that that could be uh, a way that you could have a steady income stream, you know, uh, uh, somewhere down the line, along with the other groups doing the same thing? Uh, especially, you know, that, uh, you know, things of you all are a very, very unique genre uh, yeah, as far as the, 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 the way that you, uh, the music that you present. But a lot of people are, are in that basic rock or acoustic or jazz or blues or whatever, and uh, they love each other, but it's competitive out there. And uh, so, I mean, you know, live performance, uh, you know, you had 1,200 viewers. Wouldn't it be nice if they all paid five bucks to tune in? I mean, you know, that's a that's a hell of a gig, <laughs> if, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you know, uh, have you all thought about that as far as working along that uh, in a more business approach, so to speak, or not to get too far off the topic here? I guess for me, I'm, I feel so missing live performance i mean for me I'm, I'm a performer at heart and that's really what like that's my wheelhouse like being on stage interacting with people having that experience so i'm still having i'm still struggling sort of with the transition to not having that and it i feel like if i give into the dark side of online mm -hmm. like that'll you know it gives me sadness but i do know that it may be something that we have to do um so certainly something that we'll be looking at the longer all of this Continue looking at for like a special event or something. Mm -hmm. Or like sit down and go, hey, we're going to play for yeah. like two hours. You know, let's throw a little tip jar or something out there mm -hmm. rather than. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we're, we're finishing our practice. Let's just broadcast a couple of songs. Right. <laughs> You've been successful at it, so at least it's another option you all can go to, which is great, you know? Okay, well, one, of the, one of the questions that I really, really like to ask that uh, I'm really interested in uh, because I've done it myself as well. Uh, what made you all decide to do your first album? I mean, you know, there, there's that, you know, hanging it out over the edge and actually taking the time, the money, and uh, and choosing the songs, all that. What made you all get into that aspect of it? Anybody have an immediate answer? It just had to be done. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, if, if, if you're doing original music, mm -hmm. you should be putting out a product. You know, I mean, if you're, doing, if you're doing music at all, you should be putting out a product. Mm -hmm. You know, so and it should be a, a good product. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm proud of it. Yeah. You know. Oh, you, you should be. It is a good product. Uh, but you know, we're uh, you know choosing the the right engineers and the right situation. It's. Uh, it can be tricky. Uh, it, well, I, I'm sure you all have been together enough to where the the, the actual playing is just you know is like you could do it in your sleep. But, you know, to actually get all of those sounds and, and to create a sound which is burlesque soul for, you know, Rachel and the Jellycats, I mean, that in and of itself is is a real, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a task. But I think that you all have achieved that. But, you know, not many people really want to take that step. Maybe it's because of the money. Maybe it's because uh, there are issues within the band or, uh, or with the, within the family or something like that to keep them from it. But you guys have have done it, and it's 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 a true testament to how well you all work together. Thanks. Yeah, it was it was a process, but I'm I mean, gosh, Long process. Yeah, it was, and I think that that's something that I, I mean, personally, having no experience, um, I'm not sure what I expected going into it, but it happened the weekend before um, everything locked down. So it was a very kind of strange transition. I mean, we played a huge show at Elevation Twenty Seven with like hundreds of people maybe a thousand people we recorded our entire album that weekend 
and it felt like you know everything was possible and then the next weekend the the everything Ooh. was like wait no actually it isn't so you need to chill your role a little um so it was it was really like bittersweet that was my experience with it um i don't know what what y'all felt but that was really it was hard as far as the music is concerned uh did you all have um uh, were you all sitting there with the with the engineer at the board uh you know putting in your two cents worth as far as what you wanted or did you pretty much leave it up to them Kind of both. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we came. I mean, we we sat with with Jackie, and she pretty much put everything together. But we're like a little more, you know, this, a little more this, that. that. Yeah. 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 That, that that took a while. What what ended up on the album was pretty much as we live played. We did a couple of extra guitar and mm -hmm. keyboard. Overdubs on a couple of uh, songs, but on the most part, but it's live. It was live, mm -hmm. one take. Rachel overdubbed the vocals, and that was it. So, yep. well, that, that's good because you know it. Uh, that translates into a really, really good. Well, let, let us do a song off our album, and basically, you are doing the song off the album. You know, which is really, really nice. A lot of groups can't pull that off, and uh, that that speaks well to to the way that you actually approached all that. So. Um, I know that y'all have been around doing your music scent for a while. Uh, do you feel do you feel like you actually have developed your own sound? I mean, you know, uh, that comes whether it's individually as musicians or, or racial, you as a vocalist or collectively as a group. Do you feel like that that uh, uh, that that translates into a sound that you could genuinely call your own? Oh yeah, I, I don't think that anyone would hear us and think we're anybody else. I don't. I don't think that's possible. What do y'all think? You already yeah. like us before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, uh, yeah. I really eclectic. I think is the word. Um, yeah, and I think that when people hear us, my it's funny. I have a colleague who um, watched our live show, and and she said, I couldn't place the first two songs that y'all played. Whose songs are those? I'm like, they're our songs. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, I've never heard anything like it. And um, I think that really speaks to just the the quality of the musicians I have behind me and also everybody's openness to not just creativity, mm -hmm. but just, you know, saying, yeah, I hear your idea. Let's try it. Like, we're very yeah. much a, a group that says, that sounds weird. Let's do it. And it, it can come, you know, produce some some cool things. So I really appreciate that aspect. As far as the vocalist is concerned, uh, you had to have some kind of influences. I mean, you know, somebody you know, really must have really tripped your trigger as far as, you know, turning you on to singing. And I, I like to try and hit what they're doing. Who would that be? Um, so my, I'm going to kiss Amy Winehouse, of course, is top of my list. Um, Ella Fitzgerald, of course, those are cliche answers, but I can't lie. Um, Etta James. I mean, that's really um, Shirley Bassey. I mean, she's absolutely, you know, anybody sort of in that genre of of somebody who's really interesting. I enjoy listening to interesting voices that aren't just like, this could be one of 15 people within this vocal range. I love odd voices and weird voices and, and unexpected voices. Um, and of course, people that, that tell stories and, and speak to the experiences that they have. So those are certainly the, the top few. Well, you know, Ella's from around here. So that's, uh, that's continuing her tradition, which is great. Jason, what about you? Um, well, growing up a lot of, around a lot of my parents' music. So a lot of my early influences were, 60s and 70s music, Beatles and Beast Boys and Creed's Clearwater Revival, mm -hmm. Boston, Ultra Light Orchestra. Yeah. That was my early influences until I got really middle school and high school. I started getting you know into REM and the Pixies, finding the Ramones, and um, you know that genre kind of hit me late, but that kind of was what I wanted to emulate and kind of have as much, what I do on my own for practice. Yeah, that's a really nice mixed bag. What about you, Billy? Um, it just depends on the instrument. Hmm. Um, in in this band, you know, since I'm I'm playing piano and keyboards, I, I don't really have a uh, uh, you know, someone that I emulate or whatever. I just do my thing. Hmm. Well, that's good. 
So did you start lessons as a young kid? Young child, you know, seven, eight, somewhere around there. Yeah. Tony, what about you, bud? Well, when I was growing up, I was listening to a lot of Bouncing Souls and NoFX, and then I started getting into Motown and yeah. Bootsy Collins. I just, there's so much good music out there that I'm, I'm still discovering all the time. Tony and I have a lot in common musically, you know. <laughs> <laughs> all that stuff. Really, Scott Reggae. That was my. So uh, let me ask you this. Um, I know that y'all have said that performance is, is a very, very big part of, of what you do. Um, a lot of the people that I talk to just simply cannot live without performing. Uh, it, that's just the way that they are. Um, uh, they, they would even, you know, uh, in, it, you know, to, I guess you could say to, to scratch the itch that they have would even put things on the line in, in terms of a questionable, you know, COVID, you know, susceptibility situation just to get out in front of an audience. Uh, so I, I, I take it that everybody there is is still very much behind the performance aspect. Yeah, it's, I mean, for me, it's definitely something that I, it is a huge part of my life, a big aspect of it. And um, one way or another, I have to get the attention. Let's face it. <laughs> <laughs> but we do it safely. I mean, we, you know, we, we had an album release party, which I desperately wanted to do in person with a bunch of people. We did not. We, we live streamed it. Planned out. I know. Fine. We'll, we'll have one in the future, but we, we are doing our due diligence to do the right thing, even though it hurts my heart. Um, you know, yeah, we have to sacrifice to make sure we can have better times tomorrow. And that's where we're at. Um, but we still find ways. I mean, even Jason said earlier, sort of going live on Facebook for a couple of minutes, just sort of interacting on um, just, you know, getting out there on social media and marketing and interacting with fans is, is still a big part of performance. And I think that we're, we're, we're doing that. So, well, let me ask you this. Uh, there are other aspects of the music uh, business or the business of music. Uh, are you all doing any videos? Do you, uh, do you try and uh, license your music for synchronization? Uh, are, have you even, have you gone down that road at all as far as trying to uh, make your music more, I guess you could say monetize for you. Yeah, we did license. We did license the music. We've shared it. You can find it on all of the things. I even joke that you can find it on Napster if you still have that. Maybe MySpace. <laughs> um, but in other areas, I don't know. What do, what do y'all think um, as far as? I don't think that we like licensed it fully out. Mm. Like like in a way. To, in other words, we're selling our music, but we haven't like. I don't think unless Rachel has like looked a, looked at a way to license it for like uh, soundtracks, movies. I did already. Don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> She's on top of it. When you see one of our songs on the Apple MacBook commercial, <laughs> you'll know. <laughs> Well, I got news for you. I mean, you know, uh, just one song on on you know on a movie that it's even has a moderate uh, amount of success. That's a serious paycheck. Uh, and you know, I, there's a lot. Uh, your songs have those hooks and have those lines. Uh, there's a lot of music around the area that that has that possibility. So um, uh, it, that uh, that to me is always a, a door that you uh, should remain open for all of us in terms of trying to get our stuff out there. Because you know, at the end of the day. 
Uh, once uh, once one business around here starts playing your stuff as a background for their commercials or their website or something like that, uh, people will say, well, where'd you get that music? You, they'll tell them that's you, and then they'll come out and see you live. And, you know, it just has this really, really great, you know, systemic effect as far as, you know, bringing everything out into the open. So uh, that that's a good thing. Um but we're almost out of time because basically we like to keep this around a half an hour because people's attention spans, you know, pretty much can't run past that no matter who I'm talking to. So um, uh, I need to uh, for you to tell the people exactly how they can get in touch uh, with you and how they can find out about your calendar, all where they can buy your, your CD, all of those things. It's easy enough. So you, I mean, if you go to the little Google, you all know the Google and you put in Rachel and Jelly Cats or even my name, Rachel Micheletti, will pop right up. You can find us on Facebook and you can find us on our website, which is easy, rachelandthejellycats.com. And uh, we have merch, we have stickers, we have water bottles, we have CDs, we have all the things and you can find them right there. T-shirts. T-shirts. Yeah. And and uh, I'll send it to you personally with maybe a little something special. Don't worry. Um, nothing that you couldn't show your parents, I promise. Uh, that's good. I mean, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I, pre- I appreciate any any freebies at all the, from, from the people that I love and play their music. No doubt about it. Well, listen, this has been great. You all are, are such a really nice group of folks. And um, uh, yeah, for our first full band interview, I think it it, it, it was great. It was, it was fun. And I, I really appreciate everybody, you know, chiming in and putting in their two cents worth. Um, I look forward to actually having the chance to come out and listen to you all live. Uh, You know, I I listened to the music that you sent me, and and I can only imagine. I haven't tuned in any of your your live stuff. I'll try and do that. But, you know, I can only imagine how much fun it could be to actually see you guys live. And I wish you all the best of luck. And, uh, you know, whenever you all decide to put out a video or uh, that, that you want to splash all over the place or you have another new release, let me know so I can get it out to the folks. Alton and I really appreciate you all taking the time to do this. So um, uh, thanks an awful lot. Thank you. Thank thanks you. for your time. Thanks. We appreciate you. And thanks for all you do for local music. I mean, that's you're cool. out there yes. doing the work and, and helping us all along. So mwah. Well, thank you, Rachel. You all have a great evening. You too. Thank you. Check out Radio Siva by going to the Siva Sound homepage and clicking Radio Siva or to live365.com and search Radio SIVA. If you have any questions, comments, or topic ideas for SIVAcast, or for Tom and Alton, go to SIVASound.com and click on the contact tab.